Hi. Good day to all my Pompo students. Today we are here to start on another new chapter called Manufactured Substances in Industries, Part 1, where in this video, teacher going to discuss mainly on alloy. Okay, so alloy is one of the important subtopic for this chapter, which is chapter 8 for Form 4 Chemistry. So let's start on the meaning of alloy. So alloy is a mixture. The key point, what am I writing here is the key point. Okay, so alloy is the mixture of two or more elements where major element is metal. So that is the reason why alloy is a metal, mainly metal, even though sometimes we might add non-metal as part of the mixture. Okay, so alloy is actually a mixture of two or more elements. Two might be three, four, depends on the usage needed. But some of the elements might be non-metal. But importantly, we must make sure alloy must look like metal. So the major component must be metal. Okay? N must be in specific specific composition. This is also important. Specific composition is because of the uses, the need of to produce alloy. If you add too much of non-metal, we might get a softer mixture of alloy. So if you don't want that, we have to concentrate on the amount of composition of the metal or non-metal or other type of metals added. Okay, so the major component must be metal. So that is what we call by alloy. So again, alloy is a mixture of two or more elements where the major element added is metal. So that is the reason why majority of the alloy looks like metal. Okay, but inside there might be some non-metals added into it. Okay, so but must be in specific composition. Why? Because depending on the need of the alloy or the uses of the alloy. Now, let's look at atoms arrangement. How does atoms in pure metal look like? Metal look like and alloy look like. This is very important. Why? Because it comes out a lot in essay question. Now, please remember that we are concentrating of concentration of our alloy is mainly on metal. Metal is a solid. So that is the reason why metal, the atoms of metals are drawn like this. Now, what happens is because they are pure metal. For instance, just say teacher concentrating on 100% pure gold. Now what happens is these are pure metals which are arranged in very orderly manner. So first characteristics, orderly manner. Can you see teacher draw, even though I draw in a free hand, it is very orderly manner. So they are soft. Why soft? They can slide easily over one another when forced applied. Okay, so now, so they can slide over one another easily when force is applied. So that is the reason why pure metal atoms are said to be malleable. Malleable in the sense of you can shape them easily. But if you look at alloy, okay, let's go on. So alloy is not now pure gold, pure, pure, pure gold. So just say, teacher say it's 96% gold, maybe 4% of other metal. Say copper or something, just say. Huh? Okay, now what happens if this is pure metal, which is gold, 
other elements, other atoms might have different size. So please remember that sometimes not all metals will have the same, not all metals will have the same size. Okay, so even though they are metal, there might be some metals with different size. So can you see that when I add a foreign metal, okay, when I add a foreign metal, in this case maybe copper. So this might be gold and this might be copper. Just say, huh? this is a, just a, in a, an instance, okay, a, for example. Okay, now, so can you see that their orderly arrangement have been disturbed? So this is how you should draw. Even in SPM, you are supposed to draw three, at least three atoms of major metal and you must draw small atoms of none, not to say none metal, the, the uh, small composition of metal lah, to show that how the orderly arrangement have been disturbed. So this is how you should draw. Okay, so this is how we should draw three atoms, at least three atoms of major metal and the other atoms, smaller atoms must be the atoms which are added into the metal to show how does alloy look like. Okay, so now, so now I hope you can understand the atoms arrangement, the difference in atoms arrangement. So can you see here orderly arrangement, they are arranged in orderly manner soft and they can slide over one another easily when force is applied. Okay, now here can you see for instance gold, 96% gold, 4% of other metal, just say copper, just say copper. Okay, so what happens is can you see when since copper is having a different size of metal, it's something like the copper is filling in all the gaps between the metal. So, can you see their orderly arrangement, mainly thing is their orderly arrangement has been Disturbed. So that is the reason why we say alloy is stronger. Okay, now we are going to the explanation why alloy is stronger. So whatever teacher right here is the key point which can easily gain you marks especially when you are writing essay question. Okay, now what happens is atoms of pure metal are in orderly arrangement. Okay, so they are soft because can slide over one another easily okay foreign now for alloy okay for alloy this is the explanation foreign metal atoms or atoms okay foreign atoms or foreign metal atoms if you add atoms uh, metal atoms at one of the foreign metal foreign atoms okay will disturb the orderly arrangement of the pure metal atom. So, atoms cannot slide over another easily. Okay, so now so teacher repeat. Huh? So what happens is alloy is stronger than pure metal. Alloy is considered stronger than pure metal because atoms of the pure metals are arranged in orderly manner. Since they are arranged in orderly manner, what happens is they can slide over one another easily. That is what we call by variable. You can shape them easily according to the shape that you want but they still stay as a metal. But when you add, okay, so when you add foreign atom, in this case, just say gold is added in copper, copper is a foreign metal atom. So what happens is, the foreign metal atoms or atoms will disturb the orderly arrangement of the pure metals 
atoms, atoms, the arrangement, the orderly arrangement. So the atoms cannot one another easily. So this makes the alloy stronger than the pure metal atom. So that is the key point that you need to write if asked why alloy are more stronger and harder compared to pure metal atoms. So this is the explanation which is worth full marks. It's given four marks. Usually it's given four marks for essay question. Now let's go to there must be some reason why alloying is done. Okay, so alloying is done, but make sure alloy is mainly looks like metal. Why? Because the major component is metal. I want you all to understand. So we have three reasons why alloying. First is to increase strength, strength and hardness. Which will be explained by this explanation. Increase the strength and hardness can be explained by this explanation. Okay. Increase resistance to corrosion. Okay. So what happens is because we are adding pure uh, uh, foreign metal atom. The foreign metal and atom somehow helps the corrosion, corrosion which is something like rusting, corrosion from not happening. So that is the reason why alloy can withstand rusting or corrosion. Okay, let's use the word corrosion in this matter. So alloy can withstand corrosion compared to pure metal. Third is to improve the Appearance. appearance of pure metal. Okay, so to improve the appearance of pure metal, for instance, zinc. Okay, for instance, zinc is a just a grey metal, it's a dull grey metal, not to say very shiny, it's a, just a dull grey metal. But when you add with uh, when you add with copper, okay, when you add with copper, it is called brass. So the zinc will act, will become shiny and harder. Why? Because copper, which has a nice color, will give a shiny texture to the metal. So that is the reason why to improve appearance of the pure metal. So maybe it becomes more shinier or more presentable. So that is the reason why we go through alloying. Now, what I want you to understand is alloy, we have four major components for your syllabus. We have four major components, uh, not to say components, four major metals which go through alloying. So, the one of it is, important one is copper. Okay, so copper is used mainly for alloying. Okay, mainly for alloying. So, three types of alloy for copper is bronze. Where we use major is copper. When I write a certain metal in front, please remember that metal brings the highest percentage. In here, copper has 90% percentage and stainer, which is tin. Okay? So the use of bronze is, as we know, metals. Okay? In Olympics and other activities, bronze is a type of metal used. So, copper and stainer in Malay Tima, Tina, okay, is used. Now, second is brass that teacher explained just now, okay. Major metal copper, the smaller percentage of metal zinc, okay, zinc and the use is to make musical instrument, instrument. Okay, and kitchenware. Mainly because musical instrument, uh, it, it, it is said that brass have a better frequency. Okay, when it comes to using it as instrument. For instance, saxophones, okay, saxophone and a flute or anything, they use brass.
Okay, it is said that brass produces a better musical quality, maybe to the decibels and all decibels and all that. We are not sure. Alright, now so let's go to kitchenware. Why? Because mainly it does not rust easily. Alright, now let's go to third cupro nickel. Cupro nickel. So comes from copper and nickel. So that gives away the name copper and nickel mainly to make coins. Okay, mainly to make coins. Okay, now so let's go to iron. Okay, so iron uh, has a uh, iron is too important is steel which is 98% iron and here you can find a non-metal carbon is used. Okay, now 98% iron, non-metal carbon is used. So that is the reason why we can say steel looks like metal. Okay, so mainly the use of steel is actually to for construction because it's harder and stronger. Now second use of iron is stainless steel. Steel. Okay, stainless steel. It is shiny not rust easily. Okay, so it is made up of iron, of course the main metal, chromium. Okay, a metal called, called chromium, nickel and again 1% carbon. Okay, if you look at any reference books or textbooks, you already know the you will have the percentage used. Alright, okay, so mainly used for cutlery and surgical knives. Okay, surgical instrument. Now let's go to aluminium. Aluminium has one important major use which is called duralumin. Okay, duralumin. It is light and strong. Okay, light and strong. This metal is light and strong. It is made up of aluminium as major metal, copper, magnesium, and manganese okay a type of transition metal manganese so since it's light and strong it is used for body of aircraft body of aircraft or bullet train we can even use it for bullet train okay now so let's go to tin as one major uses which you should know which is pewter I hope you have heard of the word slang or pewter. Okay, pewter where it is luster, shiny and looks nice. Actually, its appearance is nice. So, what are the components of pewter is 95% tin, stainer. You will see the word stainer. In chemistry, we don't use the word tin. We use the word, use the word stainer. Okay. And copper and as one of the major components. Okay, one of the major components is shiny and strong. Okay, so and the appearance also somewhat very unique. So that is the reason why it is used to making souvenirs. Okay, souvenirs. Okay, so now that is the four important metals which are used. Okay, as components, major metal components to produce alloy. Okay, so these metals that teacher have uh, listed for you all are all in your textbook. You can look at the components together with your percentage. Okay, they are fixed composition. Can you see? Fixed composition, specific composition, fixed uh, composition. So you can see what are the uses. Okay, so teacher uh, think that this video is very, will be helpful for you. Okay, so we will see you in our next chapter part 2 and part 3 videos for composite materials and also glass. Till then, see you all. Have a good day.